Okay, so 5.2, we're going to talk about trigonomic identities, and we're going to talk about right, tri uh, right triangle trigonomic. Don't let it distract you from the fact that the girls' bowling team is 17 and over. <laughs> okay. They better keep the streak alive tomorrow. Yes, sir. Turn me up there. Yeah, look. Tomorrow is boys. Yeah, tomorrow is boys. Oh, yeah, then Derek. Come to bowling. Okay. <laughs> right I'm triangle trigonomic. Let them hang, Layton. If you have a right triangle, okay, what is this considered over here? What is, the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Wait for it. I was a Y in 90 degrees, Talia. She was just like. Who tell them? Okay, this is your hypotenuse. What is this? Okay, if this is theta right here, this side is opposite theta, yes? Yeah? And this side would be adjacent to theta, yes? Oh, we're doing cosine or what? We are. We're going to do sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is a review. Jason? Okay. Now, oh, well, oh, well. the other things we need to talk about, there are actually six trigonomic functions, sine, cosine, tangent. Then there's cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Have you heard of cosecant, secant, and cotangent before? Yes, that was on one of my ACT courses. I'm like, Winston for sure has, because I think he was in... I don't think anyone really cares about Winston. Winston, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I Okay, listen. Cosecant... This is where it gets a little confusing, but cosecant is represented by CSC, okay? And cosecant goes with sine. It's the inverse of sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite, okay? Secant, which is SEC, goes with cosine. It's the inverse, it's hypotenuse over adjacent, okay? And then cotangent, C-O-T, goes with tangent, which makes sense, and it would be adjacent over opposite. Okay? So when they're asking you to give the six trigonomic functions on your homework in a ratio form, they're asking for you to say sine equals 3 over 5, cosecant equals 5 over 3, and so on and so forth. Okay? So when they ask you list six, that's what they're looking for. This is what most people get confused with. They want to make cosecant go with cosine, and it does not. It is. It goes with sine. How can you remember that? Cho cha towel. What? <laughs> okay. Cho cha chi. We'll let Maddie. We'll let Maddie ponder that one for a while and we'll see if she can come up with anything better. Um. So if I have a right triangle like this. And we make this theta, and we make this 3, and this 4, okay? And I want the six trigonomic functions. What are you going to tell me? Opposite over hypotenuse. Do you have the hypotenuse right now? You have the adjacent. No, so what do you have to do to figure out the... You have to do opposite over adjacent. Uh-uh. Like the one half yes, yes, Deja. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. A squared, B squared, C squared. So three squared, so first you might have to solve for a side, plus four squared equals C squared. So you get nine plus 16. So you get 25. So C is five. So we're going to label that. Now, what is sine? Four over... Five. Four over five. What is tangent? Five over four. Nope, I said what is tangent. Oh, I purposely said it that way. Four over three. Four over three. Four over three. Guys, focus. What is cosine? Five over three over four. Three over Jason. I was right. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. What is cotangent? Oh. Oh, we got a snorter. Uh, we got a snorter. Cotangent. It's three over four. Three over five. Three over four. Cotangent is opposite of tangent. What is secant? Five thirds. Secant is five thirds. And what is cosecant? Five fourths. Five fourths. 
okay? So six trig functions, that's the first type of thing you'll do on your homework. You might have to find the, the third side using the Pythagorean theorem first. Wait, so we can write these down on our test? No, these you have to have memorized. Oh. I'll give you the formulas for solving angular speed, linear, that stuff. These need to be memorized. Okay? Now, let's say you have this. Let's say we have another right triangle. I want a better um, let's say we have another right triangle. That's not much better. Okay, and this is 45, 45, 90. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to have to um, recognize, we're going to look, talk about special right triangles 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. Okay? When we do this, we get special trig functions that go with them. Meaning, that um, meaning that we um, can set up certain proportions and then turn them into radians as well. So let's talk about this. If I have 45, 45, 90 triangle, that means this side and this side are the same length. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is radical 2 times those sides. So if this is x, this is radical 2x. Okay, meaning if I set up sine, sine equal would equal 1 over radical 2. Yes? Can you have a radical in the denominator spot? No. So 1 over radical 2, to get rid of it, I multiply the top and bottom by radical 2 over radical 2. And you would get radical 2 over 2. Because radical 2 times radical 2 gives you radical 4, which gives you 2. So sine of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is always radical 2 over 2. Cosine of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse, meaning it's also going to be what? Radical 2. Radical 2 over? Radical 2. No. <laughs> it's, all, it's also going to be radical 2 over 2, because when I take 1, over radical 2, I gotta get that out of the denominator spot. Tangent, tell you maybe if you did less eating and paid attention, you'd be able to answer the question right. Ooh, Tangent that's fire. is opposite over adjacent, yes? Opposite over adjacent. So it's 1 over 1, which gives you 1. So when you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, sine is always radical 2 over 2. Cosine is always radical 2 over 2, and tangent is always 1. What is radical 2 over 2 in radian form? Mm. Think about the degrees. What degrees is it? No. What degrees is it? 45. So what is 45 in, ra in radian form? Pi over what? 90 is pi over... Yes, it's pi over 4, because 90 is pi over 2, so half of that would be pi over 4. So this sine of radical 2 over 2, okay, also equals pi over 4, which is the same as 45 degrees. This, because it's a 45 degree angle, also, again, equals pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. So when cosine is 45 degrees, it is pi over 4, or it is radical 2 over 2. So you can work and change between the three of those types of measurements. When sine is at 45 degrees, it also, in radian form, is pi over 4. Or in ratio form, it's radical 2 over 2. Okay? When you have tangent at 45 degrees, tangent it equals 1, or it equals pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So when tangent is 45 degrees, it is 1, is its ratio, or in radian form, it's pi over 4. When you take pre-calc, or if you took pre-calc, or if you took, um, I think, Winston, are you the only one that took pre-calc? Mr. Rice makes you memorize this chart and quizzes you over it for like the first three weeks. Now, 
This right here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Yes? Okay. So let's talk about what coat, what um, sign looks like through the 60 degree angle. Okay? 30, 60, 90 means that I have an isosceles triangle that was cut in half, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So my um, base is going to be represented by 1. This should be 2 times whatever the base is. And this should be radical 3, whatever the base is. Okay? The hypotenuse is radical 3, whatever the base is. Is that correct? Wait, no, I like It's opposite. This is radical 3, whatever the base is. This is 2. I keep writing that wrong. I keep saying it wrong. This is 2. This is radical 3. Sorry. So the sides are double because what I would have technically is an equilateral triangle, which would mean that this would be two, yes? Together, so when I cut it in half, it makes that one, that's two, that's radical three, what the base is. So if I look through 60 degrees, if I wanna do sine 60, what does sine 60 come out to be? It is one over what? Sine 60 is? I don't. Yes, radical three over two because it's opposite over hypotenuse. So radical three over two. So sine sixty is radical three over two. What is sixty degrees in radian form? Pi over three. Pi over three. Yes. Okay. So sixty degrees in radian form is pi over three. Now, what is cosine 60 degrees? What is my proportion for that? Cosine 60. One over two. One over two, one half. And in radian form, it's still <coughs> pi over three. What is tangent 60 degrees? Uh, radical three. Radical three. Over one, opposite, over adjacent, yes? So just ra I can just leave it as radical three then technically, okay? I don't have to put it over one. So radical three. And it once again is pi over three. So on that triangle of 30, 60, 90, my 60 degrees has a pattern as well. If I do sine of 30 degrees, what do you get? What would sine 30 be? 1 over 2. So sine at 30 degrees is the same as cosine at 60 degrees. So sine 30 is 1 half, where cosine 60 is 1 half. And sine 30 in radian form would be what? Pi over... Pi over... 6. Okay. What is cosine 30 degrees in ratio radical form? Three radical 3 over 2. So cosine at 30 is the same as sine at 60. Radical 3 over 2. And it's pi over 6 again. And then what is tangent 30 degrees? Oh, 1 over... 1 over radical 3. Okay, which can I have a radical in the denominator? No, so multiply by radical 3 over radical 3, and you get radical 3 over 3. And tangent 30 degrees is also pi over 6 in radian form. So there is a pattern to this. Tangent at 60 is radical 3. Tangent at 30 is the inverse of that, which is radical 3 over 3. Cosine 30 and sine 60 are the same, and sine 30 and cosine 60 are the same. So there are special patterns we can recognize. Um, the last thing we need to do in this lesson today <clears throat> is to be able to put stuff into your calculator. So if you have, if we have sine, <clears throat> if you have sine 76, um, point 
76.4 degrees. Okay, if I have sine 76.4 degrees and it says um, use a calculator to figure out um, what the proportion is, how do you plug that into your calculator? <coughs> You press sign and then you just put in. What do you get when you press sign and put 76.4 in? 0.97. Do you want it with the um, degree sign? Do I want what? Degree sign in. Um, no, you don't need to put the degree sign in. So just put 76.4 and you said you get 0.972. Okay, perfect. So I get 0.972. Now, what happens if I plug this in? What if I say I want cotangent 1.5, and I want it in radian form, not degrees? Tyler, will you hand me that calculator? This is going to be a little trickier. Okay. Cotangent goes with what? What does cotangent go with? What's, what's its inverse? Tangent, okay? So cotangent goes with tangent, okay? Now, if you plug in, um, if you press second and then press tangent, you get that inverse of tangent. And if you put 1.5 in, you get an answer of like 56.3. That's not in radian form. That's in degree form. To do radian, you need to press mode. And do you see how right now your uh, degree is what's highlighted in that third column? You need to transfer it down to radian. Where did you go? Press enter, though, on that so that it stays. Okay, now go back, just press clear, and let's see what happens when you plug in the inverse. To do cotangent, you have to do the inverse of tangent 1.5. You get what? Anybody hear you speak? 0.98. 0.983. 0.983. Okay. So that's because yours was already in radian mode. Okay. So listen, if it's asking for degree mode, you need to make sure your calculator's in degree mode. If it's asking for radian mode on your homework, you need to make sure your calculator's in radian mode. It's going to change back and forth on several problems tonight. So you're going to have to physically change your calculator. Got it? Because if you put it in, um, if I plug in sine 76.4 right now while it's in um, radian mode, okay, I'm going to get an answer of 0.842. That is not the same as 0.972, correct? No. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you're in the right mode of what it's asking for. Those are the things we are working on. Just stop it. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you some homework over this. <clears throat>